Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Wang Yu. I come from China, and I joined the Fire Eye from last uh, June. Uh, today, my presentation name is a new CVE 2015 and 157 exploit technology. Uh, that means we will talk about uh, exploit skills. Uh, this vulnerability is uh, is a very traditional use after free uh, vulnerability which is introduced by the Windows kernel use mode callback mechanism. But in my opinion, uh, the, the exploitation process is quite interesting. So let's begin. Uh, you can reach me through this company email address. Uh, this is my, my company email address. And from the in last year, from the CVE 2015 and 157 to CVE ID uh, 1701, this one also known as uh, APT 28, and to uh, CVE ID 2546, this one was captured by FireEye. Uh, it's uh, APT class the other day. And even to CVE. Uh, CVE ID 2360. This one is also known as uh, uh, the second generation of Duke uh, was captured by Cosmos guy. So uh, we, uh, we, we have repeatedly caught APT class zero day attack, all of which uh, targets the Windows kernel user mode callback mechanism. So this leads me to revisit this uh, old school kernel attack surface. So this talk will focus on the CVE ID uh, 2015 and 57 and the use mode callback mechanism. And today we will discuss the following topics. Uh, the background of the vulnerability and the NCC group's exploit methods and my exploit methods and the other uh, exploit skills and so on. Uh, I made a timeline of this event. Mm, as can be seen, uh, on February 10, Pat Tuesday, MSRC pushed many system level patches, including this vulnerability. And on the same day, Udi Yavo, uh, I, I, actually I don't know how to read his name, uh, Udi Yavo, uh, the discoverer of the, uh, one, the, this vulnerability, released a technical blog on that topic. And Woody described the, this vulnerability in detail and demonstrated the process of exploiting the vulnerability on the 64-bit Windows 10 technical preview operating system. And four months later, uh, on 17th of June, a new variant of DYRE, uh, Banking Trojan, was detected by our company, by FireEye. And this variant of DYRE, uh, Children attempts to exploit two vulnerabilities uh, in, all, in order to obtain the system privilege. And this is the first time the CVE 2015 and 157 was founded to be exploited in the wild. Um, then on 8, 8 July, NCC Group published their technical blog describing their exploit techniques in detail which allows the ex exploit to work reliably on all 32 and 64-bit operating systems from Windows XP to Windows 8.1. And in December, uh, this, this Frenchman uh, published his 64-bit uh, exploit code. Uh, he just used the NCC group's method. Uh, and this is the, the vulnerable routing. Uh, this routing name is, is too long. It's, uh, it's XXX uh, window, win, uh, XXX enable window scope bar, blah, blah, blah. Um, as can be seen, uh, there are three, there are three function routings. Uh, this, this one, this one, and this one. With the prefix XXX, they all means uh, use mode callback. Uh, this, this, route, this routing will uh, issue use mode callback to user mode. 
And uh, and the the PW fun, uh, pointer is a, a local variable, local variable reference to the kernel object, and it can be seen after the use mode callback, the kernel just uh, uh, overwrite the 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 kernel object directly without any without any, without any checks. Uh, they, they just use the object directly, but uh, Let's let's uh, in, imagine uh, what will happen if the use mode malicious use mode uh, if they uh, try to destroy window and free the object. So what will ha what will happen? So that means the this object uh, this right behavior means uh, use after free. So this is a very traditional uh, vulnerability in Windows kernel and this. Uh, back maybe from Windows NT or, or Windows 2000. And this is the uh, ex execution flow. Um, this one is the vulnerable routing. And th this object, tag SB info, is actually the, the, vulnerable, uh, the vulnerability related object. And uh, this routing will issue use mode callback to use mode, uh, use mode clients. Also, also maybe it's uh, exploit, uh, exploit code. And the exploit code will will destroy window, and destroy window means the object will be freed. And then uh, the the exploit code will allocate another object to take place uh, as a placeholder. And then uh, return back to to the kernel, but the kernel don't know what happened. They, it will just uh, reuse uh, or overwrite the, this object, and that means the use after free. So, so it's very this, this is a very uh, traditional use after free vulnerability, and uh, this is a old school kernel tech service, I think. So. Uh, let, let's image, uh, imagine uh, if we use another object to, to as the memory placeholder. Uh, if there is an array, and the kernel will patch the array size, what does that mean? That means uh, this ob this object or this array will result in a out of bounds access, uh, right? So. If there is a lot of array, so uh, the first one will over, uh, the first one will be overwrite, uh, and the array size will increase, and the first one will uh, overwrite the, the second one. So there is a maybe there is a, a chain re, uh, reaction. So so the, the next question must be, which object can be used? Can be used here. Uh, there are actually two options available to trigger a use operation after the call to destroy a window, namely set and unset. We can see uh, here before. Th this one means uh, or or uh, instruction means set and the end may maybe means unset. So the, the this one is better. So we choose this code branch. Uh, and the question is, which object can be used? Finally, we, we found a, a perfect object named check prob list. As can be seen, the the first uh, field of this object uh, is uh, array size, and this one is array. So the kernel will overwrite the array size, and the, this array. Uh, and then this array means uh, out of bounds access. So, so this object tag properly is the uh, is the perfect object as the memory placeholder. Uh, so, opting the use tag properly structure as the use after free memory placeholder is primarily based uh, on the following considerations: one, two, three, and four. Uh, uh, first, the, the tag prob list object and the vulnerability re uh, related object tag as being for, they are all allocated from the same 
same heap. They, they all locked from the desktop heap. This is very important things, right? Uh, and then uh, inside the tag prop list object, there is an array named the tag prop. Uh, there is an array named the tag prop. This array size can be adjusted to meet the needs of the exploit. And then the, the contents of the tag prop list can be manipulated through uh, uh, APIs, through uh, such as user 32 APIs. Uh, so we can we can control the contents of that object. And uh, the, the finally, the, the crucially, uh, the the behavior of the set operation after the use after free vulnerability will overwrite the tag prop list C entries. This one overwrite the C entries field, which means that the subsequent of operation on this tag prop list can result in another out of bounds access. So so it's just like a, a chain reaction. Uh, it, it's a perfect object. Okay, uh, it seemed all good news. Uh, is there any bad news? Of course we have. Um, and this is the tag prop list object uh, structure and the internal set prop uh, pseudocode. Uh, as can be seen, um, this, this field named the DW flex cannot be controlled. The value is uh, two or zero. Due to the uh, characteristic of this routing, we cannot control the FS field of the, of the tag prop uh, structure. So what's that mean? Uh, I will show you. This is the, this is the uh, memory layout. So that means we cannot control, uh, we can control the blue areas. We can overwrite the blue areas. But we cannot control the red area. So in, in other words, from the perspective of exploitation, for every eight bits, there are two bits out of control on 32-bit operating system. And on 64-bit uh, platforms, out of every 16 bits, there are six bits out of our control. It's terrible, right? Uh, because we will override the, the heap memory. And, and the, the six bits we cannot control. This, this will lead the system crash. And, and the, the, right, uh, the right restriction also means we cannot repel the, the heap corruption because uh, it's the right uh, operation. So, so the obstacles can be summarized as follows. The, the first one is uh, the right ability of tag prop list objects set prop method is restricted due to the implementation of the internal set prop. And since the right and hence the repel capability is limited, so continuous memory corruption is unacceptable. So our next step in this journey would be to solve the problems listed uh, above uh, to achieve precess uh, memory write using set prop. Uh, so for me, uh, maybe I will say don't, just like the Homer Simpson. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at how NCC groups Aaron Adams worked to overcome these obstacles. This is uh, NCC groups method. This is the Aaron's Memory layout, uh, it, it's heap uh, Let me explain, explain the details for you. Uh, the, ex, the exploit per method use tag prop list and the tag window as the heap function layouts. The Aaron uh, spray the tag prop list 12. The, the first tag, tag prop list uh, spray is used to create a placeholder object when the use after free happens. And in order to facilitate the distinction, let's call it the UAF uh, tag prop list. And the second tag prop list spray is used to create a stepping stone object 
used to achieve relative memory reading and writing. This one. Uh, uh, we, we can call it the zombie tech probabilist. And lastly, the tech window is the host object automate, ultimately used to achieve arbitrary kernel memory reading and writing. So there are three objects uh, in, in the memory layouts. Uh, it's heap feng shui. Uh, this, this is a heap feng shui layout. And we can see here, uh, this one. Uh, the original value is maybe four. And, and it was written by the kernel, uh, maybe to, to see at, at, this, at this time. So this one is the array size. So uh, the, the array actually only have one has one, two, three, four, four uh, items. But at this time, uh, the, the size uh, be changed to C. So this means the o, o B access, out of bounds access. Uh, the exploit process begins from the UAF uh, tech prop list object. By calling the set prop routing on the UAF tech prop list, we can uh, effectively control the adjacent adjacent zombie tech prop list uh, sides and I first free. This one is I first free fields, um, and then uh, with the reference to the obstacle one, also we we are unable to fully control the value of the I first free. But it, it is still enough to jumpstart the, the whole exploit process. But uh, the, the set prop list limitation will be evident when exploit attempts to control this one. This one. Uh, th this one is the tag wings str name buffer field. Uh, Ardom choose this one. I'm sorry. Arum, Arum choose this one to uh, Arum choose this one. This is function pointer. Uh, is uh, is this uh, str name buffer field has the ability to read and write bits in the kernel memory. So overwrite this uh, th this function pointer to to the target uh, important uh, kernel structure, and and maybe means uh, he can overwrite, uh, he can read arbitrary memory read and arbitrary memory write. So, so at this time, he, he cannot fully control this function pointer. Uh, in order to solve this problem. Arum comes come up with a clever set of complex scheme. He first uh, uh, manipulates the tag prop wings uh, PSB info field, and uh, which can be completely controlled uh, by point to the uh, and then point this one to to the str buffer name field, and then Arum then rewrite the the this function pointer indirectly through the uh, set score info routing. So this uh, random bot scheme finally allowed him, allows him to bypass the write restrictions so we faced earlier and achieve arbitrary read and write capabilities. Uh, so this one is uh, the RM's 32-bit exploit method. Uh, the 32-bit exploit process can be summarized as follow. And I, th I think the the number two and the number three are the key points. Number two is uh, use the uh, corrupted uh, object to rewrite the adjacent uh, the PSB info field, and then use this uh, PSB info field to overwrite the the, the target indirectly. Uh, and finally, this one fully under control means. Uh, the exploit code achieve arbitrary memory read and write. Uh, obstacle solution also can be summarized as follow. And this, uh, and the exploit process uh, as shown in this picture. Uh, uh, this picture is, 
the exploit process. And for 64-bit operating system, uh, note that the heap header, this one is a heap header. Heap header uh, is a structure uh, named the heap entry. The heap entry will be completely overwritten when calling the set prop uh, on a 64-bit operating system. So ARM's 64-bit exploit method changes to use tag prop list and, and the window text one and the tag window and plus window text two for objects to perform heap feng shui. Um, uh, the, the exploit process still begins from the UAF tag prop list and uh, set props uh, out of bounds write capability is used to overwrite the, uh, the, the window text once heap enter with a specially uh, crafted replacement heap, heap entry. But everyone knows if we rewrite the heap entry with, uh, with, uh, another value, the system will crash, right? Uh, so in order to maintain the valid heap layout, a fake, this one, a fake heap entry is also stored in window text two. So the, the, the solution, uh, uh, this one. So this solution, not only solved the problem of the system crash caused by heap header corruption, it also has a side eff effect that the tag wing object will be completely merged into, th means this one, this object will be completely merged into the, the big uh, uh, object. So that means uh, three, uh, three heap blocks will be merged into two heap, block, heap blocks. The, the first one is the big one, and the, the second is the small one, just like this. So this is a, a special crafted heap header, and this header is a, a fake heap header. It's very smart uh, method, but I think it's very traditional. Uh, Maybe 10 years ago, the, the heap, uh, heap exploits uh, skills always use this uh, method. Uh, so this is a very important point. Uh, th this method is a very important point because uh, free, the, free the window text one will also means the tag wing object will be freed at the same time. Uh, additionally, due to the uh, user three to G shielding for uh, information disclosure issue, mm, an exploit can easily uh, forge a new tag wing object. The, the difference between the old one and the new one is the str name buffer field was under the attacks control. And from another point of view, uh, this exploit process can also be seen as a uh, user created or a forced use after free. So uh, the, the semantics of the tag rings str buffer name field changes when the memory free operation is triggered. Uh, the 64-bit the ex, uh, exploita uh, exploitation process can be summarized as follow. And I think uh, number two, three, and four are the, are the key points. So uh, reconstruction and idea heap layout by by a special uh, heap header, and uh, then free the, the text window one. This, uh, this behavior will cause the following tag wing object to be freed as well. And then rebuild the, uh, a new tag wing object based on the information disclo disclosure from the G shell info. Uh, and this, this is the uh, obstacle solutions. Uh, so the, the first use after free technical uh, and the uh, recreation of the new tag, wing, tag window based on the information disclosure bypass the obstacle too. Uh, it's very smart solutions. 
Um, so as a response to Aram's inqu- inquiry, uh, I would like to share with you a few different exploit techniques and uh, as an expression of gratitude to Aaron. Similar as the Aaron's method, my 32-bit exploit method used tag prop list and uh, tag menu uh, objects to perform heap function. The exploit also sprays, sprays tag prop list files at least. Um, let's call them UAF tag prop list and zombie tag prop list uh, respectively. The tag menu is the host object ultimately used to achieve arbitrary kernel memory read and write. A similar, I choose the tag menu object because the tag menu's RG item, uh, RG, RG items array uh, has the ability to read and write uh, bits in the kernel memory. The, the exploit process uh, begins from the UAF tag prob list and uh, uh, compared with the RM's scheme, the zombie tag prob list uh, give us a better control over the tag menu, uh, tag menu's RG items and the C items field. Also, we are unable to fully control the value of RG uh, items, but uh, it, it is fine. It is still uh, enough to jumpstart the exploit process. Uh, thus, the exploit process is r- relative simple and works without the help of uh, G-shielding for kernel information disclosure. Um, this is my method uh, summarized and the uh, exploit pr- uh, obstacle solutions. Uh, but this, uh, okay, this is my 64-bit exploit method. Uh, uh, I call it the right controllability of misalignment tag prop list object. Uh, okay, with the reference to the obstacle one, uh, if we want to reduce the above scheme on 64-bit platforms, we will find that the UEF tag prop list uh, actually cannot control the, the, the adjacent zombie tech prop list. I first uh, free this field. Uh, there are the two fields here. Uh, this, this blue one is the C uh, entries. This means the total number of the, uh, the items in the array. And the, this one, I first free is the currently used the number of currently used in the array. So, uh, so if the if the if this one is nine and this one is four, it means the the array has uh, nine items, but uh, and the currently used is four, and the next one will be uh, used is five. Uh, and if this one is eight and the the, the the total number is nine, means the array size is nine, and the next one will be used is uh, nine. So if we can control this field, that means we can uh, achieve the exact uh, offset writing ability. But, but uh, if we cannot control this field, that, m- that, means, uh, that means continuous memory corruption seemed to be inevitable. The exploit will overwrite one by one the, the heap memory uh, layout. So, loss in control of the I first free means uh, what? We, uh, what means that we are unable to achieve exact offset offset writing based on the set prop, and the, the continuous memory corruption seemed to be inevitable. But it understood that the tag prop list is pointed by the p prop list uh, function pointer of the tag win object. So on the 64-bit platforms, we happened to have the four control uh, th- this function pointer, and this one is uh, this method is a common method. I think it can be used to any uh, their day exploit or. or uh, vulnerability exploit. 
this is my memory layout. Uh, first, we can say the, access, uh, the, the access, uh, area controlled by the zombie tech probabilist object is shown, uh, is shown in blue. Uh, in other words, we can control the blue areas, but we cannot control the red areas. And if, we, if, if, if it were possible to point to this function, this function to our pre-constructed fake the tag prop list object. So uh, I just uh, point this function to some place I can control. And this value is, uh, is uh, how to say, this value is the misalignment value. And if I can do that, it means that we can achieve relative heap memory read and writes. And then use this misalignment object. I can control these blue areas. And we can see it. Uh, so so uh, we see that the control capability of the fake tech probabilist and the zombie tech probabilist uh, complement each other well. So after rewriting the tag wings, uh, pre properly the field to point to our uh, crafted fake tech, tech probably object. Uh, the only thing left to do is use the fake tech probably and the zombie tech probably uh, uh, alternately, um, and then we can try, uh, achieve the uh, arbitrary memory read and write primitive. So this is my basic idea: uh, use the misalignment object. The, the 64 bit exploit process can also be summarized as follow. Um, and I think the, the number three and the number four are the key points. Uh, point uh, the, the fun, uh, the, this function pointer to uh, tag prob list object, and, uh, and this object contain user controlled misalignment values. And then use the, uh, this one and this one uh, ultimately. Uh, this is an exploit process. Uh, this is a picture. So it's demo time. Computer is a little slow. This computer is. Uh, 64 bit uh, Windows 8.1 uh, unpatched version and a, a current uh, privilege is user. It's not system privileges. And then I run the exploit code. I can get the system to read. <laughs> and uh, let me see. Let us see more clearly.
Open the workspace in file. Oh, never mind. Oh. As can be seen, uh, this is the tag prop list. Uh, the the U, UAF tag prop list object, and uh, this one is the zombie tag prop list hip, hip, uh, hip memory layout, and after that is the tag wing object. At this time, this value is zero; it's none. And after the call, after this call, I can. I can overwrite this field to point to uh, point to Can set a breakpoint here. <coughs> so this this feel, uh, this misalignment object can be uh, override to any value I want. And I just let this uh, this uh, exploit continue. Uh, as can be seen, we, we got the root shell. Uh, we got the uh, yes, we got the root shell. Uh. Uh, conclusion uh, uh, the the thirty two and sixty four bit exploit process uh, described uh, above. Uh, both try to convert the use after free vulnerability into a relative heap memory read write and then uh, convert to arbitrary kernel memory read and write. Uh, in, in both technique, uh, having control over a tag menu's RG item and the tag menu uh, C items is the core of the exploit. Uh, this is because the a structure array RG items and uh, its corresponding method are required in order to achieve our read and write primitives. Uh, this is the same reason why uh, the tag wings STR name buffer were selected before. Um, and 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 uh, uh, on the 64-bit operating system, uh, Arum tried to use the force First, uh, use after free method, and I try to use the misalignment object method. Uh, uh, the, the, the next part is uh, others. Uh, in order to achieve the high reliability of exploit, we also need to solve some small but important problems, such as the uh, heap data repair and the interference from the memory alignment and the, the Interference from the attached instance routing, and so on. A lot of things uh, need to be solved. Uh, 
let, let's take a let's take the interference from the memory alignment as a, as an example. When trying to perform hip feng shui, uh, we will have a certain probably of facing the memory alignment issue. This behavior uh, lead to a chain reaction, uh, such as the change of hip enter and the overwrite offset, just like this one. This is alignment on the 64-bit operating system. Uh, but fortunately, based on the kernel information disclosure uh, by the g shell info, we can predict the details of the current heap memory layout and mo modify the uh, heap memory layout dynamically. So the next question must be, what is the g shell info uh, information disclosure? Uh, I think this mechanism should be reconsidered. Uh, uh, this is the uh, how to say this is the official uh, kernel information disclosure. <laughs> I, I think uh, it's very old mechanism, maybe from Windows NT or, or, or uh, uh, from the from the disclosure of uh, zero day vulnerabilities used by APT actors to the last. Uh, uh, open type zero day exploit code leaked from uh, leaked by the hanging team. We continuously saw the use of G shielding for uh, uh, mechanism from uh, for the desktop heap and the shield heap. All efforts for the kernel random randomization will come to naught due to the G shielding for information disclosure, and even the kernel heap a uh, kernel heap enter. It's kernel heap header encoding, which was introduced by Windows 8, will also be leaked to user mode. It, it's crazy. Uh, this mechanism, uh, if this mechanism cannot be disabled by uh, due to the uh, capability, uh, c compatibilities issue, I think Microsoft, Microsoft should minimize the use of G shell info mechanism. Uh, and in order to demonstrate the risk of G shell info mechanism, I also uh, wrote a tour, demo tour. And on the 64-bit operating system, th this tour will demonstrate that the leaked kernel data is not only limited to the following information. Uh, for example, the kernel routing address information, kernel data structure information, kernel object memory layout information, uh, desktop heap information, and even the, the random cookie. I will show you. My computer is, uh, is Windows 10, 64-bit. And I just, uh, uh, I just uh, run the, Uh, just to run the, the the tour directly. A lot of kernel information were disclosed. I, I just dumped the kernel handle table. Uh, uh, graphics kernel hand, handle table, and uh, uh, as a as an example, I try to use the tag window. We can say uh, oh, sorry. We can say uh, this is the. Kernel mode address, kernel mode, this, this handle objects the kernel mode address, and this is the user mode uh, mapping address, and uh, this one is the heap header, uh, heap, ha uh, heap header's cookie, and I can decode the, the cookie and get the heap size, heap block size, and this is the heap, uh, heap uh, desk top heap information, and this is the, the the data structure of the tag wing in kernel. So I can, I can know every bit I want, and even the memory layouts. So uh, this, is, this is terrible things, I think. 
this mechanism is from Windows NT to Windows 10. And in addition, uh, there's another, uh, there's a tiny floor in Udi Yavo's technical block, which I will point out here. This is the Udi Yavo's block. And at the end of the block, Udi said, it's a funny code uh, in the Windows kernel. Um, Udi mentioned that there is a piece of dead code residing in uh, the vulnerable routing over 15 years, uh, the dead code. Uh, I think the, the conclusions could be drawn based on the following logic. This is the uh, reverse engineering from Windows kernel. Uh, the, the seventh line of code is the conditional statement. This one. It, it's the, uh, uh, okay, this, this one is a conditional uh, statement. And the, the, this one is the assignment uh, statement. Um, uh, if, uh, we, we can, we can see this one. It, this, uh, if this is A and this is B, so uh, A is not B. Uh, if A is not B, so let the A equal B. And then A and some value, uh, must, I think must be equal B and some value, right? Uh, so so uh, this code must be that code. This is the uh, Udi's uh, this is what uh, said before. Um, how to say? It, it, it appears to uh, assign uh, the, the WSB uh, flags to old flags, and also uh, it seems that the, the, condi uh, the conditions uh, on the eighth and uh, the twenty-four uh, will be never be true. Will never be true. But is this the Truly, the case. Um, please don't forget, uh, the use mode callback is the root case of many statement inconsistency type vulnerability in Win32K. In this example, uh, to active the the branch of the the XXX window event, uh, attackers only need to enable the uh, the score bar with the uh, with this callback use mode callback. So, so not only uh, is this uh, this routing is not dead code, it's also another trigger point of the vulnerability. Uh, uh, if we can invoke set win event hook in exploit code and then call destroy window during the event callback, uh, we can trigger another use after free. The call stack, the, the call stack as shown below. And actually, I use this uh, method to trigger my exploit code. But fortunately, uh, Microsoft uh, develop developers uh, realized this problem. So the, the patch blocks five possible entrants of the vulnerability in total, completely covering the seemingly dead code branch. So it's not dead code. Uh, just uh, Udi don't know how to trigger it. The end. Uh, I think deeply. I, I think the following aspects worth pondering. For example, the subsystems uh, lock mechanism, uh, uh, the, the life cycle um, management of window related objects, and uh, this one, the G shell info mechanism. Uh, I think this mechanism should be reconsidered. Uh, okay, finally. Uh, the takeaways, three takeaways. Uh, we, we discussed the, the exploit skills. Uh, we discussed the, the G shield info mechanism. And the status, inconsistency type vulnerability. Uh, I think the, the finally, uh, the uh, activation of the 
XXX window event code branch is a vivid example of the complexity of use mode callback mechanism. Another wonderful example comes from uh, CVE ID 1701. This one is uh, APT 28. So uh, it re remind us the uh, unlike the traditional use after free and non-point dereference vulnerability, the inconsistency uh, it, uh, of the user mode callback is rather than mysterious side of the vulnerability. Because uh, there's no need to destroy object. It's too heavy. Uh, we can just uh, change some bit in the use mode callback, such as change the flags, change the status, change the uh, the, the the properties, we can we we can also achieve the uh, privilege escalation. So I think no need to destroy window; it's too heavy. So um, as the definer, we must uh, always maintain a clear understanding. Uh, thanks to my colleague and my team, uh, and thank you all. <laughs> Sorry for my English. <laughs> <laughs>